another day to come into your house and rejoice. Father, I ask that each and every one of us just stop, take two minutes out of the day and, and be grateful for those things and the blessings that you continue to show upon each and every one of us. Father, I ask that you lead God and direct us in your will. For your will, all things are possible. Father, I ask all these things in your heavenly name. Amen. Amen. Thank you a few people this morning. The few we do have. We'll be singing out of the new book this morning, the church hymnal. Start out with page number 83. Page number 83, Rock of Ages. Darkness of night has drifted away. My 
feet are planted on higher ground. Glory to God, I'm homeward bound. He set me free, yes, he set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound, my Jesus, to see. For glory to God, he set me free. Goodbye to sin and things that confound. Not of the world shall turn me around. Daily I'm working, I'm praying to and glory to God I'm going through. He set me free and he set me free and he broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound my Jesus to see for glory to God he set Page number 404, 404, Heavenly Sunlight. Words of wisdom, people often get upset when you teach them what is in the Bible rather than what they presume is in the Bible. Amen. True. Any announcements? Homecoming. There's a sign up sheet back there, Donna. If you haven't signed up to see what um, people bring in, because we won't bring nobles, but I'm sure one will eat whatever we brought. And you don't have to bring anything. Don't forget this uh, women's event that was on the 27th. That's 11th. 11th. 
That's canceled, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, canceled. That's yeah. past. Yeah. All right, never mind. Forget about that one. <laughs> <laughs> Any other announcements? Well, then you'll have the fall festival on the Wednesday after. Well, I guess it'll be next Wednesday? Yeah. 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 We, week from this Wednesday. Yes. Week from Wednesday. Sunday and Wednesday. By yeah, the 30th. 27th homecoming, the 30th fall festival. Any other announcements? How about prayer requests? Uh, Brother Cliff still got problems with his ears. You know what I mean? So try to keep him in your prayers. I don't see Miss Kim or uh, Leanne today. Leanne got her last cheer competition today, so that's where they're at, and I'll be joining them here after a while. So it's not a lot of them out there? Yeah, yeah. Issues with D and Dot and the kids. Yeah. Another one, Haley. Yeah, remember them and Dot will be uh, with D will be driving back from uh, Gatlinburg today, so keep traveling mercies for them and yeah, Haley and other keep keep them in your prayers for the situation there. Anybody know where Jennifer's at? Any other prayer requests? Just continue to pray for, for Kelly and my family each and every day. Any other prayer requests? All right, Robbie. Heavenly Father, our Lord and blessed Savior, as we bow before you today, Father, we, we come to you in thanks. The thanks for everything that you give, you, that you do, that you provide. Heavenly Father, and most of all, we thank you for your Lord and Savior, our Lord and Savior, your Son, Jesus Christ. And what he's done on that cross that, that allows us to have the Holy Spirit live within us, to give us the grace that you rain down upon us, Father, in your mercy. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask you to watch over the ones that we've asked for prayer for this morning, for the healings of, of the sickness. And, and if there's somebody that's got something heavy on their heart, Father, I just I pray that they just... Bow their heads and just give it to you, Father, because there's nothing in this world that you've not already conquered, Father. You're, you're greater than any demon or beast or, or giant that we've ever faced. Father, just, just keep the, the lost in your, in your healing hands, Father. Keep them covered and protected that, that they'll accept our Savior before the time has come that there'll be no chance to do that again, Heavenly Father. And just the little things we're getting ready to do, just, you know, it's, Lead God direct us the ones that are that are around us to help you do it, Father, and just you know, so that we can give you all the praise and the glory. And Father, we just as we sing songs of praise and glory to you, Father, we just ask to come come be with us today. Come come fill this your house with just the Holy Spirit, Father. That the, the words that the preacher brings to us will just sink into their hearts and be the seed that just allows this kingdom to grow. Oh Heavenly Father, we are we are so blessed to, to be in your world and, and to be one of yours. Heavenly Father, we ask a special blessing over the offering so that we can keep the lights on or feed somebody that's hungry or, or help somebody get something fixed. And in my Jesus' and heavenly name, I do pray. Amen. Amen. Alan, if you put your finger on that phone, it should already be up there, and then all you would have to do is hit play when you're ready. Just touch the screen. I forgot that she she done the offering too, so we'll get it figured out. Sometimes rehab turns to relapse, and you're left just asking why. And for all the prayers I pray, I still wonder if he's real. And if he is, how is he choosing who he does and doesn't heal? I tried to run from Jesus, I've started holy wars. I 
tried the patient waiting and the kicking down the doors. I cursed his name in anger with my fist raised to the sky. In return, all he's ever been is And I burned my share of bridges. Learned to tuck my tail and run. Watch the wreckage in the rear view. All the crooked things I've done. And I know that he forgives me. But it's hard to forgive myself. I can't help but think amazing grace is for everybody else. I've tried to run from Jesus. I've started holy wars. I've tried the patient waiting and the kicking down the doors. I've cursed his name in anger with my fist raised to the sky. And in return, all he's ever been. Sorry, I lost my place. That's good. <laughs> there was something else I wanted to add today. I'm sorry I kept that a little short. This this stuff's been on my mind all week. I've had a pretty trying last last few months, but you know I was reminded again yesterday of all the trials that I've been through in the last five months. And if this would have been the old me, I would have been long gone and way out. But the good Lord continues to hold on to me. So I can't imagine what it would be like to not have that Holy Spirit. I need him each and every day. Amen. This comes out of Proverbs 19, 20 and 21. It said, Hear counsel and receive instructions that thou may be wise in thy latter end. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. All right. This also come, this comes out of Ezekiel 36, 25 and 27. It says, I will give you a new heart with a new and right desires, and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony heart of sin and give you a new obedient heart, and I will put my spirit in you so you will obey my laws and do what I, whatever I command. You know, it's the adversary's responsibility to continue to remind us of our failures each and every day. It is our choice whether we follow that or whether we follow Jesus Christ. And I choose to follow Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Bless you, John. <clears throat> Any testimonies? Well, it's just like the song that, that he was singing. And I don't know if everybody else's life or history or past here, but I can tell you that what he's saying has been my life as well. I've kicked against the critics. I've cussed that old man that stands above me. I've turned Jesus away, and I've fought not to follow what he tells me to do. And my Lord and Savior reached down for me and brought me up because of his kindness, his love, his grace, his mercy. I am allowed to stand here today and give him all the holy hallelujahs. Thank you. Amen. 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 You're singing scared him out of church. Did you see that? You don't run him out of church. Run him out. Any other testimonies? Well, I had some little cute things to prepare, but while I'm being with life, I can remember a time sitting at the beach with Dawson Seaman. I started thinking this morning, just thing to Robin and all that, you know, we are truly blessed that we have the opportunity to get to know Jesus. I can remember in Afghanistan, 
you know, we would go 30, 40, 50 miles out away from Kandahar to roll Afghanistan. And this little commune type thing where they had stone ig igloos formed in a circle, no bigger than the congregation of this church, you know, just one room stone houses. And in the middle was just a circle of stones. And that was their little mosque. And they would come out four times a day and they would pray. And, you know, and then they would go farm and stuff like that. Um, I just wonder how often has somebody actually approached them to introduce them to Jesus. You know, so we are very blessed and we are very fortunate that we are introduced. Amen. And I thank, thank God for that. Amen. But before I step down, we do have one more song to sing. Because somebody Friday turned one year older. Oh. <laughs> so if she would like to come up here. <coughs> Savannah so Banana. Say happy birthday. You started out, John. Huh? You started out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Um, I don't want to scare everybody else out of church. Oh, and, and Larry and his wife, they had to go take care of a granddaughter situation. Okay. That's why they had to sneak up. All right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Savannah. Happy birthday to you. Say the roads are safe for at least another year and a half or so. so. <clears throat> Anybody else with the song or testimony? Turn your Bibles, please, to the book of Genesis, chapter 6. Genesis, chapter 6. everybody had a good week this week good to be in God's house again today and thankful for each one that's able to make it out and we open up God's word we pray God will bless as he has already this morning their songs and testimonies <clears throat> Genesis chapter 6 I'll bow our heads for a word of prayer before we get started. Father in heaven, we come to you this morning, God. We thank you so much for watching over us. We came here today. Have your way in each and every heart that's here. And God, we pray as we look at your word this morning. God, your Holy Spirit would speak to us. And God, we would receive those things that you need us to receive. And God, we pray that you would have your way in each and everything that's said and done. And God, as we go away from this place, the Lord, that we'll follow and trust you for all things. And it's in Christ's name we pray, and amen. amen. Genesis chapter 6. Bobby mentioned this last week in his uh, testimony about the ark. And um, come to my thinking, actually, I didn't even ask to, to think about that word pitch. Pitch within, pitch without. Pitch within, pitch without. <clears throat> All right. Genesis chapter 6, we'll start reading at verse 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. J Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through, through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. 
Rooms, room shalt thou make in the ark, and thou shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. We all know the story of Noah um, and the ark. We read it since we was one of the most popular stories of uh, children's teaching, I'm sure, and um, uh, we all know what all happened with the flood and all the, the ark being built and her message is preached on it, lessons taught on it. I will say the Hollywood version of Noah, do not watch it unless you're very sound in the Bible because uh, it's a joke. <clears throat> um, so, and I, and I say that kiddingly, but also very serious. Don't watch it. Uh, I watched it and I sit there going, where's that at? God, it's not even in there. Uh, but it's Hollywood. <clears throat> but, um, so we all have kind of an idea. But this ark that God had instructed Noah to build was a metaphor, if you will, of God's protection upon the righteous. And one important part of this ark as I said last week, and uh, we read here today, that one instruction that he told Noah was to pitch it within and without, inside and outside, with pitch. Now, whether you know what pitch is or whether you don't, it basically it's black, black. It's just the stuff you put on. It's basically the same what we would know of today. It's stuff you put in caulking around chimneys and things like that. It's black and you kind of smear it and keeps uh, keeps water out. It's what was good back then is still good today. And there was a reason why he told him to do that. Now, this word pitch in the Bible, as we read here in, Noah, in Genesis chapter 6 of the story of Noah, when he told him to put it within and without, the word pitch used here in the Hebrew language was kofer, K-O-P-H-E-R. Um, now it's got, I can't tell you the little symbol, but that's the, that's the English trans translation of that word, uh, is kofer, it's the Hebrew. That word is the same word used as atonement. How amazing is that? The word atonement is this, the act by which God restores a relationship of harmony and unity between himself and human beings. Now, the word atonement, if you look it up in the, in the Strong's Concordance, they're, they're literally one number off. It's like 3722 and 3723, something like that. But it's the same word, coffer. In Leviticus chapter 4, chapter 1, sorry, Leviticus chapter 1, I'm going to kind of walk through this this morning. It's more of a lesson. I want you to have an understanding of the importance of what Bobby talked to us about last week. I'd like to thank Bobby for that, for that message thought, because uh, it got my mind thinking. But in Leviticus chapter 1, and verse 4, it says, And he shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering, this is talking about the priest, and it shall be accepted for him to make atonement for him. Again, that word atonement here is kofer. K-A-W-P-H-E-R. The word for pitch is K-O-P-H-E-R. Same thing, just different, different, uh, different letters. But it means to cover, to make an atonement, reconciliation. You look up that word, to cover, to make an atonement, to make reconciliation. Listen to this. Cover with pitch. That's the actual thing that it says about this word. To cover with pitch. Back in the book of Acts, or back the book of Romans, sorry, book of Romans, chapter 5. Verse 10 says this, For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Important. Not our life, his life. And not only also, not only so, but we also enjoy in God throughout, 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Same word. You see, the word atonement that I'm driving at here is vitally important to our life here on earth, to our salvation. For if we didn't have that restoration or that reconciliation, the Bible tells us we have we now, because we're saved, we now have the ministry of reconciliation. In other words, we have an understanding that we have now been reconciled to God. That which was separated from God now has been brought to God, not by our own lives, as we read in Romans chapter 5, not by our life, but by his life. That's why you hear the word atonement so much throughout your life if you listen to messages. The word atonement is so important because without the atonement, we don't have any hope. We don't have any peace. Without the atonement that God instructed Noah to put on the ark within and without, now you can kind of kind of imagine, kind of picture in your head, building a boat made of wood. Wood is porous. So, um, you know, at the funeral home, people ask me, they, they want a wood casket. They say, what well, does it seal? I say, no, they say, oh, it don't seal. I said, no, it wouldn't matter if it's sealed or not. Wood's porous. So even though water may not get in it for a while, eventually it'll soak through the wood. So therefore, no, you don't get a, a wooden casket that's sealed. There's a reason for that. Unless we did what? We pitched it within and without. We pitch. So we can kind of understand, we can kind of see why Noah had to do. He didn't have a welder. He didn't have one inch steel to make his, uh, make his hull out of. All he had was what God instructed him to get, and that was the wood, the gopher wood. So he said, you need to make sure that you are protected from the outside things coming in. You must pitch it within and without. Our lives today must be pitched within and without with the atonement of God. So, what did, what did this pitch within and without protect Noah his sons, their wives, and his wife from? Well, first off, it protected them from corruption. The outside in Noah's day, what, what, what was wrong with the world that day? Well, the Bible tells us that the generation of Noah was just, was a just man, perfect generation, and Noah walked with God. And verse 11 says, the earth was also corrupt before God. Why did God want to destroy the world? Because there was corruption in the world. They had literally done every, did everything that they wanted to do. If you go back to the beginning of that chapter, it tells exactly what happened, what, what was going on at the time. And God said, look, it, I repent that I made the earth. That don't mean that God made a mistake. He didn't have to repent for what for doing. He's he saying, I, I knew what was going to happen. Leaving us to our own vices, we mess up. God said, and I regret the fact that we've done this. That again, that doesn't mean that God said, well, I made a mistake here. Or people say this, well, God even admits that he made a mistake by making, making mankind. That's not what it's saying. Study, study your Bible. It's not what he's saying. He's not saying, I wish I hadn't done that. He said, now that this has happened, now I've got to do something to make it right. He found Noah. Noah walked with God. And he was righteous in his generations. He was perfect, as it says, not perfect as being not without sin, but he followed God. So he said, look, Noah, you must, we must fix this situation. So I'm going to take you and your inhabitants, and you're going to go into the ark, and we're going to start over with you and your family. So but first, you must build this, build this boat. You must put it, pitch it within, pitch it without, because there's going to be corruption on the outside of this ark that you're building. Romans chapter 12. And verse 2 says this. And be not conformed to this world. 
but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 1 Thessalonians <clears throat> chapter 5, verse 22 says this, abstain, listen to abstain from all appearance of evil. Amen? Amen. Ab abstain from all appearance of evil. In other words, there's corruption around us each and every day. Everywhere we go, it does not matter if you do not leave your house. Corruption is there. We live in a world of corruption. That's why he says, not only to destroy the earth in that day, the earth is going to be destroyed once again by fire this time. We know that because it's in the Bible. So if we're going to be protected from this corruption that's around us, you say, what corruption we around Noah? You think of, you know, I, I began to think about that thought, and I thought, you know, at that time, when water would begin to come up, you can kind of picture in your mind what was going on. All these people thought Noah was crazy. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, these individuals are like, you know what? It's something, there's some validity to what he's talking about here. It's up to my knees. The earth is flooding. Noah, let us in. Yeah. Come on. We're drowning out here. You see, it wasn't that he didn't want to save them. It wasn't that Noah made the rules. God was making the rules. And he said, you know what? Don't let the corruption in there. There's a reason I'm doing this because if you let that corruption in, then it will now be inside the ark and it will affect your family. This is not any different today. That's why the Bible tells us what we said, abstain from even the appearance of evil. When we apply that pitch within our lives, within and without of our in our lives, there's something about not being not enjoying the activities of the of the world that we once what we once enjoyed. Like Josh said, the old man would have done a few other things than what you what you've been doing. Why? Because you've had that atonement now applied to your life. Anytime that we see when we get saved and we truly get saved, we have a born again experience. It does not mean that we don't make mistakes, but that we, we know that in our hearts, we don't now want to enjoy the mistakes we've made. I look at people's lives, I look at my own life. And we can look back at our old selves and we can kind of joke about it a little bit and we can say, well, this is what we would have done, what we did. We can might laugh a little bit, but if... It does, I don't know any Christian that when they talk about that, so we may jack, laugh and joke about things, but you know what? There's a side that says, but that really wasn't funny at all. Because I was corrupt. I was doing things outside the will of God. But once that atonement is applied to, is applied to my life, once that pitch has been put on, on our lives, it keeps that corruption that we once enjoyed now on the outside. Because we cannot let it on the inside. And that's why I abstain from even the appearance of evil. <clears throat> the saddest thing that we can see today is when you can't tell the difference between somebody that's saved and somebody that's lost. We live in a world today that we look around and we see people say they're saved. We see people on TV talking about how they, they believe in God. I love to hear people say they believe in God, but I would much rather hear them say I believe in Jesus. Because God is so vanilla to the world. Maybe they are talking about the one true God. But if they believe in the one true God, then they're saved by Jesus Christ and his act. So when I see people and I hear people you know, watching sports programs, it seems like everybody they interview now says, I want to give glory to God. And I, and I hope in my mind, I think, you know what? I'm glad they said, but I, I, want, I want more. If I want to praise God with you, I want to know that you're trusting Jesus, not just God. Because it could be the God of the world. The God of the world can be praised just the same as our God can, but we praise him through Jesus Christ. You see, the appearance of evil in this world that we live today, the corruption that is around us, it is very easily to be sucked in and taken for a ride in this life by Satan. So many people try to justify 
the activities, the corruption that they get themselves into instead of separating themselves from the world. You know, what when they were protected by this pitch and this ark, by the corruption, they were separating themselves from the outside. That's why the Bible tells us that we are to be sanctified. We are to be pulled away. We talked about that before here. We've been, we're to be pulled away from the world instead of be sucked into the world. That word sanctification is a pulling away. So if we are protected by the corruption, there's, we're, not, we're not going to be sucked into it. We're going to be pulled away. Why? Because there's a, there's a atonement around our lives. Just the same as there was atonement around that boat that, that wouldn't allow the corruption to get in. So the world can justify all they want. And they like to justify all that they do. But you know what? When the Bible says what's wrong is wrong, what's right is right, there's no, there's no, there's no discussion there. And we must keep that in mind. We as God's people, we, we, I've always said there's a few things in life that, that I'm not going to split hairs over people over different beliefs in this or different beliefs in that, but there are a few things that I will not bend on. There are several hills in the Bible that I will die on. I will make my stand and I will die on those hills. And those are the things that can't separate us from the rest of the world. Those are the things that separate us from many of the religions in the world. Because in my mind, those are corruptible, those are corruptible things. And as long as that atonement's in my life, God says, look, separate yourselves from the corruption. And you do that by applying the, applying the blood of Christ to your life. What else protected? What else was they protected from? Well, I think the obvious, the flood. They were protected by the flood, from the flood. And Matthew 5.45 says this. <coughs> that ye may be children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. The rain came in Noah's day. The same rain that everybody else on the outside felt, guess what? Noah and his family felt the same rain. There were windows. There was a window in the top. We know that the rain came. We know that they stood under that. Guess what would have happened? Rain would have hit them. But what was the difference between the rain hitting them on the inside and those that rain hit them on the outside? The flood got the ones on the outside. The pitch that was applied to the ark protected them from the flood. It's not that we don't suffer in this life. It does not matter. It does not say that we will not go through things. It does not say that we won't have temptations. It does not say that we will be protected from sicknesses and, and trials and all these things. And the Bible does not give us that promise. But it gives us the promise that we will not be destroyed. This flesh may go away. I may get cancer one day. I may get, I may go, to, I may go to the doctor on Tuesday. They may say, you're full of cancer. You got two weeks to live. Well, guess what? He may, it may destroy this body, but I'm protected from the flood. I'm going to be going to heaven. I'm going to be going where, I, where, where God wants me to be. I'm going to be with the Lord. So it does not say that we're going to be protected from these things, but what it says is that we will not suffer the same destruction as everybody else that does not have the atonement. The pitch... On the ark would protect them from being overtaken by the flood. I thought of those folks down in Tennessee, Virginia, North Carolina. And they showed some of the houses that were taken away by the flood. If you look, just a few I've seen, there were some that were completely wiped out. I hate it. You know, it's an awful, awful situation. But there were a few houses that, I, that, I, that I've seen that literally picked it up off the foundation and moved it and set it back down. Inside, the floor might have been wet, but everything was intact. But how odd that is, that the water is that strong, the flood was that strong that it literally picked it up 
and moved it and set it down off its foundation. And yet everything on the inside was still, still upright. It amazes me. But that's how strong the flood can be sometimes. You see, our, our lives, we may suffer some floods. We may suffer from, from high waters of life. And it may pick us up and it may move us, but the water can't get in. Why? Sealed. We're sealed up. Exactly right, Bobby. We're sealed. We're sealed by the Holy Spirit, the Bible tells us. So the Word of God is so, it gives us the, the assurance that whatever flood comes in our life, we may be moved from here to there, but God says nothing will make it to the inside. You may feel the rain, but the flood will not get you. You will be protected. They were protected by these things. The ark, we know the ark didn't stay in the same place. I was watching a thing this week. At least everybody believed that it was on Mount Ararat and all that good stuff. And it, the Bible says that it was there. The Bible says that gives it gives tells us basically where it's at. But they think they know exactly blah, 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 all this thing. But you know what? Bottom line is we know that Noah didn't start up there. We know that it stopped when it started on, on a mountaintop. So we know that the floods carried Noah and his family to another de destination. But it didn't kill Noah and his family because they were sealed on the inside and they were protected. So the pitch protected them from the corruption of the outside world. The pitch protected them from the flood. The flood would not get in the, in the ark. And we know by the story of Noah that they were protected by the destruction of the outside world. Those that were on the outside of the ark suffered catastrophic fatal losses in their life. They were destroyed. The earth was destroyed. But Noah and his family as long as they stayed inside that pitched within and pitched without ark, they were protected from that destruction. We've been talking a lot here lately, last several weeks, about the rapture, about the tribulation period. Aren't you glad today that we're protected from that seven-year tribulation? Thinking about the whole time we were sitting and talking about all those things, everybody had their opinion about different things. That's, that's great. That's a good conversation. But I'm so glad that grace is protecting me from even having to see any of that. They were protected from the destruction that was around them. You see, there's a guarantee. There was a guarantee in Noah's day that everybody except the seven that was inside that ark, six that was inside that ark. Hey, <laughs> crying out loud. That's awful. <clears throat> he had three sons in his wife. There was a guarantee that those on the outside was going to be destroyed. But there was a promise to those on the inside that you will not be harmed. We have that same promise today. We have that same promise that the atonement that God has placed in our heart by Jesus Christ with him being applied to our lives, within and without, we will be protected from the destruction of this world. I'm glad of that. I'm glad I will not have to be here. I'm glad that, that, that what Christ did on Calvary saved me, not only me, those that believe. Has been a, had made, God has made atonement through Jesus Christ, has made a reconciliation by the blood that was shed on Calvary. Aren't you glad of that today? Mm -hmm. Protects us from corruption. It protects us from the flood. It protects us from just destruction. There's all kinds of things that protected that family. It, it, it protects us from as well. But that pitch was the key. Because without the pitch, there was no protection at all to that ark. But because of that pitch, the family went from one place to another they may have got wet from the rain. They may have heard the corruption on the outside, and they may just, they may have heard the destruction. But they were safe on the inside of the ark. The key to the, today's life is to be safe in the ark of safety of Jesus Christ. 
Without it, we had no guarantee. And you think about those that are live around us, those that are those that we care about, those that we love, those that we 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 don't even know. I hate the fact that they don't have the atonement in their lives. That's why we're here. That's why he's left us here, to seek and to save that which is lost. I said it before, I'll say it again, probably another thousand times. Jesus' mission while he was here on earth was to seek and to save that which is lost. That's why he said he came. Well, that's why he left us here, is to seek and to save that which is lost. We want more than anything, you should want more than anything to see your loved ones come to Jesus Christ before it's too late. And they can, they can have the same atonement as we have. It's all by our heads. Father in heaven, we come to you this morning. We praise you. We thank you, God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the atonement that comes through Jesus Christ. And we ask God that you just touch us and help us to be in the center of your will. Whatever we say, whatever we do. We thank you, Father, for the blood of Calvary that your son shed upon Calvary. That we can have that blood applied to our lives and you can take that which is blackened, stinky, old and nasty, and you can make it brand new. Father, be with each and every one of us. Help us to be a witness to this, to this world around us. Help us not only to have the atonement, but to show the atonement that it is a real thing and that you truly love us. And you sent your son to die on Calvary to reconcile us back to you. We praise you. We thank you for all things. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And amen. Amen. All right, let's all stand this morning. Wednesday night, let go and let God come back and be with us. Um, We're just about ready to wrap that up. About ready to wrap it up in two weeks, so we'll be downstairs and so um anything else homecoming that'd be next sunday won't it well jumped right on it didn't it all right anything else all right let's all bow our heads be dismissed and uh brother alan would you dismiss us please